Hey everyone, thank you so much for joining us today for this first look at what's new in Reading Horizons Elevate version 8. My name is Joe Billman and I'm the Director of Software Development here at Reading Horizons. I'm super excited to be here today to show you this brand new version of Elevate. Ever since we released version 7 of Reading Horizons Elevate, we've been collecting your feedback and working hard to create the new version from the ground up. Version 8 has been completely rewritten using HTML5, which means that we are no longer dependent on the Flash Player plugin. So now Elevate will work on iPads and Chromebooks in addition to desktops and laptops. And the design is completely responsive to various screen sizes and resolutions. The new version has also been given a totally new look and feel, and we hope you'll find it to be more intuitive and easy to navigate, both on the student side as well as on the admin side. We're also excited to show you several new tools and features that we've built into Elevate that will allow you and your students to do even more with the Elevate software. So let's get to it. First, we want to show you what's new in the student side of Elevate. And to do that, I'd like to introduce Brooke Fogid, the product owner for Reading Horizons Elevate. My name is Brooke Fogid, and I'm a curriculum developer and software product owner for Elevate. Version 7 of Elevate software was a fantastic product, but we've worked hard to make sure that version 8 is even better. This is the new login screen for Elevate V8. As you can see, the student login is right next to the admin login. So you can stop going way up to the corner of your screen. I'm going to log in as a student. I'm tracking my home use. So I'm selecting yes because I am at school. The first thing you'll notice is the go button which is basically the same as version 7, it will take your student directly to the next step in the program. However, you can also go up here to this part of the menu and select Lessons, Library, Vocabulary, and other sections. This is the Lesson Selection screen. Currently, I'm on Chapter 4, but let's go back to Chapter 3 and look at Lesson 35, Phonetic Skill 2. As you can see, on the right side of the screen, I know the lesson number, the title of this lesson, I have a short summary, and I have a vocabulary tracker. Let's start this lesson, and I'll show you that all of our new lessons begin with an engaging, encouraging video starring one of the two narrators of the program, Michaela or Conlon. Awesome job! In this lesson, you will learn the second phonetic skill. It will also help you know when a vowel sound is short. Throughout the instruction portion of the lesson flow, there's more interactivity to keep your students engaged. This includes more decoding practice and more activities. The activities at the end of each lesson are a little bit different now because we now have two levels of challenge, one a little bit more difficult than the other. This allows students to have a choice in their education. Mastery of any lesson or test is set at 95% or higher. All of our lessons and quizzes are now capable of being reset by students so that if they don't score 95% mastery, they can try again to achieve that mastery star. We've also gamified our content to a greater extent by adding a badges element to the software. Students now have the chance to earn badges in several areas of the software from assessments to vocabulary. Many students will be motivated to complete their collections once they've started earning those badges. They'll also be motivated to spend more time in different areas of the software such as the vocabulary section, or the library, so that they can earn those badges as well. Students now have the chance to earn coins. They can earn coins by completing lessons, taking assessments, reading passages in the library, and so much more. These coins can be redeemed for playtime in the game section or especially engaging high-interest passages in the library. Speaking of the library, look at this new modern interface. Without having to click on anything, your students can see at a glance passages they've already read and how well they've performed. They can also quickly identify lexile measure, point value, and whether or not this passage is available for purchase. 
On the left side of the screen in the new library, there is a new search box and new sorting and filtering tools that will swiftly help your students find passages that suit their interests. In this new updated library, there are 330 high interest, low readability nonfiction passages. Many of them are the same passages that we had in version 7 of Elevate Software, but more than 45 of them are brand new. All passages have received a new Lexile measure and updated quiz questions. Plus, depending on the needs of your students, you can now allow them to refer back to the passage while they take the quiz. This will help them when they have trouble answering those quiz questions that are a little bit more challenging. Here at Reading Horizons, we've tried really hard to make this Elevate software the very best that it can be for you and for your students. Thank you so much for listening today. Thanks, Brooke. After all the work we've put into this new version of Elevate, it's awesome to see it in use. Brooke and her team have done incredible work to update the lesson flow, add more passages to the library, and improve the overall experience of using Elevate. We really believe these updates will help your students to be more engaged in learning and ultimately help them to have more success. In addition to all of these updates you've seen in the student side, we've also rebuilt the administration portal in Elevate to give you, the teacher or administrator, more options and tools to help you manage your class role. To show you what's new in the admin portal, I'd like to introduce Ryan Burwell, our Reading Horizons Director of Customer Success. My name is Ryan Burwell, and I am the Director of Customer Success. I am going to show some of the new administration portal features in Reading Horizons Elevate V8. I'm excited for people to see it. Um, it's always scary and exciting to get something new in teachers' hands because there's a lot to learn, but there's a lot uh, that, that teachers and students can benefit from. So um, we'll jump right in. So Reading Horizons Elevate V8 has a whole new look. You can see that we have added an instructor column to allow for uh, administrators to easily see which students are assigned to which instructor. You'll also notice an enrolled date and a last login date. There is a real-time feature now which allows you to see students that are currently logged in and observe what they're currently doing. So let's take a look at Lucy here and see what her screen looks like. And it looks like she's on the reading assessment. So you can actually follow along with students as well, just to check on them to see what they're currently working on. Um, if we were to refresh and she makes progress, you'll see the next screen that she moves to. So going back to the class role, we've added some new add, edit, and edit multiple student features that you can take advantage of. So in the edit student screen, I now have the ability to force a lesson. This is exciting because you may have been instructing on a specific skill that day or this past week that you really want to assign to a student, but you don't want to take them out of their sequence of instruction. Um, so you can jump in here, force a lesson, it will take them out of wherever they're currently working, whether that be an assessment lesson or test, and will move them ahead to that lesson. When they've completed it, they'll move back to the previous lesson and pick up right from where they left off. We also have a hide passage feature now. This is a big deal because we changed the way the reading library works. When the students see comprehension questions, they still see the passage. So if you would like to hide that passage while the students answer comprehension questions, you can do that by checking this box. We have some new functionality in the lesson overrides section. You can actually require, make optional, or lock any lesson in the program You'll also notice that the reading library assessment and the diagnostic assessment are a part of the sequence now. This makes it easy to assign these assessments at any point in the year. So if you wanted to assign a mid-year assessment for the reading library assessment, you could do that, um, either using the force next or the set next down at the bottom here. So another new feature for version 8 that I'm excited about is the preview content. Previously, I've recommended to teachers that they create themselves as a student, maybe place some overrides on themselves so they can go in and experience some of the program themselves. Well, now you can log in as an administrator and actually see that by clicking the preview content. So you'll notice that as I log into this preview content tool, I have course complete and a go. That's because as I click this drop down, I can go to any point in the program because I've already completed the course. So, 
as I go through the chapters, I can select any lesson within the sequence. I can select that lesson, and I can even select which part of the lesson I want to view. So if I just wanted to see the activity section, I could do so and click Start Lesson, and I'm going to jump right in and be able to select my activity. You can also go find any library passage. So you start at a high reading level, so you can access any of the passages, and of course, any of the other content, just like a student could. There is now a message center added to Reading Horizons Elevate. And this is exciting because as an instructor, maybe you didn't know that your student had failed something and they just tried and tried again and then eventually moved on. Now we actually send you a message in the message center live. The student could have just failed it moments ago. You're going to get that message right away and then you can always come back and review it here. So you can see that Carol, in this case, failed one attempt of the chapter five quiz. Also, it looks like previously the chapter four quiz. Another purpose for the message center is to let you know that maybe your students aren't spending the required amount of time to thoroughly read a passage. So it's kind of a words per minute warning here where the program looks at the, the student's time spent on a passage and sends you a message to let you know maybe the student didn't read the full passage. Elevate V8 has a whole new set of reports that I'm very excited for. We have a full group reports section. So you'll see reports you're used to, like the class role report. There are some new columns here. The course progression report is nice because previously you could only see a current lesson. And if you weren't intimately familiar with where lessons fell within the sequence, you may not know where your class is right now. So this is a nice report to be able to tell you where students are in their course progression, how close they are to completing it. There is a new skill gains report. Um, I think this one is fairly obvious and there's a good reason to have it in here. Are my students making gains and are they meeting some of the goals maybe we set at the beginning of the year? We have a new group skills report where we can look at specific lessons at any point in the program and understand how the class did on that lesson. So this is a great tool to differentiate instruction um, to monitor which students have completed this skill lesson, which students maybe still need help with the skill lesson, and which students have mastered this lesson. We have a new chapter test report. So you can see how the whole class did on a chapter test, and it will show multiple attempts. We have a new time report. Previously, it was the full amount of time the student was spending, and then the time in the last 30 days. Now, you can see your whole class at once to understand exactly where they are spending their time within the program. So you have both a chart view here, and then you can also view this in a data form. The diagnostic report, I think this might be the thing I'm most excited about. Um, at the beginning of the program, we're trying to understand the student's um, level on each skill, and previously that was shown in an individual report. Now I can see it, the whole class, how they're doing on each of these 42 skills. So you're getting this assessment and these results at the beginning of the year, and you can see where students need to improve throughout the year and some of the skills you'll need to build up to and target in this year's instruction. Individual student reports can be found on the lower half of the screen, and you can select students by clicking this drop down here. The student summary report is similar to what the student will be seeing on their side of the software. They can see overall course progress, where they're spending their time, and then scores on lessons, vocabulary, library, and assessments. You can use the drop down to look at specific lessons or vocabulary to determine how the student did. The chapter test report is different because we changed the way students are tested in version eight. Previously in version seven, students were tested once at the end of a chapter test. Now they actually have two quizzes, which focus on skills in isolation in a chapter, and then a chapter test, which fo focuses on skills and context. So we can see here in the chapter test report that students have scores for tests and quizzes for each chapter, the date they were completed on, and the duration of the test. You'll also notice that some of the tests have stars next to them 
because we're considering 95% or higher mastery. Students can take tests and quizzes multiple times. The student skills report shows details on how the student performed on each skill within the sequence. So not only does it show major skills, but it also shows minor skills. And we can see as we scroll through a student record here that even though a major skill may have been passed, minor skills can still be failed. So this would be a great opportunity for some data-driven intervention. The library report allows for teachers to see students' lexile measures on both the reading library assessment, but also their performance within the library passages. And you can see by chapter the student's lexile measure and words per minute. This report will also show quiz items and each attempt for reading passages. The vocabulary report has changed significantly because the way that students interact with vocabulary has changed. They actually now spell words and then mark the words within that vocabulary section. So you can see here in this report if the student typed the word correctly, what they typed as the word, and then if their decoding score was correct. You can even drill down to the lesson to see how students performed on words that applied to that skill. This has been a brief overview of Reading Horizons Elevate version 8. Um, we're very excited because we think that this is going to help so many of the teachers that we work with. Uh, between previewing content and seeing what that student experience looks like, to utilizing reports to actually drive instruction, um, I think this is going to make a tremendous difference to so many people that we work with. If you need any additional help, have questions, or need a more thorough walkthrough, please contact our Customer Success Manager team. We would be more than happy to help. We want this to be a success for you and your students. Thanks, Ryan. As you can see, there's a lot that's new. These updates have come as a result of the feedback that we received from you, the end users of our software. Ryan and his team have been crucial in facilitating the feedback to make sure it got to us and into Elevate. The creation of Reading Horizons Elevate version 8 has been a monumental effort from everyone involved. As the Director of Software Development, I'm so proud of my team and other teams involved in bringing this product to you. I want to thank all of you again for joining us today for this first look. We're excited for you to explore these new features and put them to use with your students. We recognize that ultimately Reading Horizons Elevate is just a tool in your hand to help you accomplish your work in teaching the world to read, and we applaud you for your dedication.